Hi everyone and welcome back to Building Websites in R with Distill. In today's tutorial, we're going to create a custom color theme for our website. Now this is one of my favorite parts about creating and designing websites, but I will warn you, you can easily spend hours going through and selecting different fonts and color and trying out different color palettes. Okay, but to start, we will open up our project And I'm just going to go ahead and build our website straight away just to remind us what it looks like. All right, so here's our website. And now let's just quickly compare it to the official Our Girls website just to take a look at some of the things we're going to uh, change today. So first, we're going to want to update the font and the color. And specifically, one other thing you can note is even the navigation bar is slightly different. So I've made the font sizes a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. So those are some of the changes that we'll work on today. So let's go back to our studio. And now what we're going to, of course, load in our distill library. And the first thing we're going to do is use a function from distill called Create theme. Of course, that's exactly what we want to do. So now all you have to do is put in what you want the name of your theme to be. So for us, we'll call it Our Girls Theme and click Enter. Okay, so just like that, now we can see we have an Our Girls Theme.css. So this is a different type of file, it's a CSS file. So here we can also see it's been added to our files here. Okay, so this CSS document is a little bit long, but don't worry, we're going to go through, um, we're going to go through it step by step. Okay, and now before I forget, we're going to jump over to the site.yaml, and if it's not opened up in your tab, remember you can go to files and open it up right here. So because we are creating a new theme, we have to make sure R knows that we want to use that theme within our website. So I'm going to add a line. It don't, I don't think it matters where you add it, but I'm just going to add it here on line six. And we're going to say this argument or parameter theme. And this is important that it your theme has to match up exactly as you created it. So here we're going to go R girls theme dot CSS and we'll save that. Okay, so that's all we need from the site. And now the next thing we're going to do is choose our font. And to do this, we're going to just Google Google fonts because we will need to be used to use Google fonts here. So I'll open up the link. And so this is the first place that at least I find myself spending loads of time scrolling through and trying to find the perfect font for for my websites, right? And there are a lot of different filters you can go through and play around with. Um, so do take plenty of time and find the font that's perfect for you and perfect for your website. Now, for the Art Girls website, I already spent my time going through and the ones I decided to use are Open Sans. So once you find the font that you want, you can click on it. And here we actually see we have even more options. So you can see, you can scroll down. Some are italicized and some are bold. I am just going to use the regular 400. So now we can select this style. And now we see a lot of different options pop up here with our selected family style. Here, it's important we want to click on this import button. And here we see some code, and it's actually inside what we call a style tag. But the important part is we want to copy all of the code inside this tag. So I'm just going to do Control C. And now back in our studio, at the very top of our newly created CSS file, we're going to paste in this. Um, what we just copied, right? So it's really important, whatever fonts you want to use, 
on your website, you do need to make sure that you copy this information and paste it at the top of this file. Okay, so here we have, you can even see, here's the open sans, and I'm going to do one more. So I'm gonna get rid of that and just go back. And the second font I'm going to do is am Amaranth. Okay, so I, I really like this one. It's a little, a little bit more fun. And again, I'm just going to select the regular 400. Again, go to import and copy the code here. Go back and now on a new line, we'll just click enter and paste and paste it in right here. Okay, so now we have our open sands and our amaranth. Okay, so now we'll scroll down just a little bit. I'm going to skip over some of this just because right now we're focusing on the fonts and on line 30, you can see it even says specify custom fonts and it warns you that they must be imported above and that's what we just did. So here is where you can play around and change the fonts. So I'm gonna put the amaranth here and here. And then for this one, I'm going to have it open sans. Now, another important thing to note, because open sans is two words, we do have to make sure to use a, a quotes. Again, this is because program ling programming languages often have issues with white space. So this is just a way to make sure R knows what we want. Okay, so I've saved that. And now to test this out, let's just go to our homepage or our index file and click NITS. Okay, cool. So here we go. We can see our fonts have been updated. So that's a very good sign. And so once you're happy with your fonts, then the next thing to do is change some of the font sizes. So now I'm gonna scroll back up and here on line 18, you can see it says main font sizes. So here you can play around with this to really get it exactly what you want. I'm going to make the, tech, the title size a little bit smaller. REM is another way that you can specify the measure, uh, the size, but I'm going to keep it consistent and just use the PX for pixels. So I'm just going to put 18. I'll make this a tiny bit bigger and I'll leave the rest the same here. So again, not too much will change now, but if we knit our file, Okay, it's hard to even see if we can even see any noticeable changes, but that's okay. That's just to keep it consistent with what's on the R Girls website. All right, the next big decision is choosing your color theme and your color palette. Now, I highly recommend going to a website called Coolers. I've spent way too much time on this website, but this is where you can explore different palettes, right? So get a sense of, Maybe you'll find one that you love and you can use it. Or my favorite is making your own palette. So this is really cool because you can press the space bar and it will generate different colors. And as soon as you see one that you like, you can lock it in and then keep pressing the space bar and generate new colors. Okay, so for example, I just randomly selected this. Let's say this is the, your color palette that you absolutely love. Now, just so you don't forget it, it's a good idea to export it. For example, we can call it, um, well, I'll just call this a test because I'm not actually going to use this one. But now you'll always be able to remember the colors that you chose. And importantly, these numbers are really important because these are what's called the hex, the hex code or the hex number for each specific color. So I do recommend saving this information somewhere just so you have it and you, in case you ever need to come back and update your website or change the colors. Okay, and so for example, here I have the R Girls palette. Now, when I did it, it was a little bit different. It saved it a little bit differently, but you can see, I'll just zoom in a little bit. 
So you can see this is the main pink. Here's the hex number. There are different ways that you can identify the number. So there's also the RGB. Um, so there's a lot of information here, but I'll probably stick with using these two, I think. Okay. So now we can go back here and we'll scroll down and update our main font colors. All right, so for the R Girls website, this section is actually quite easy because I have actually just made everything this for the main font colors. I'm just using, I, I believe it's, it's essentially black. It's this dark, dark navy, right? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making it all the same color. Okay, and now let's keep scrolling down to see what else needs to change. There is some information I'm going to skip over just because I'm going to keep everything else as it is, but feel free to take your time and go through all of the lines of code on your own. But if we go down to this, the distill site header, here I'm going to update this information too. So I'm going to make this bigger. I'll keep this the same. The text size I'll also make a bit bigger. I like the white as the hover, and importantly, the background color. So this is the background color on the header. You can see it's pink here. So we want to make it this pink. So I'll just copy here and paste. Okay, so let's see if that was all of the changes we want. Cool. Okay, so we can see now our navigation looks better and all of this looks better, except, okay, there are two things. First of all, this is not pink and our buttons are not pink as well, right? So we do wanna make those two final changes. So let's go back to the theme. So to make these final changes, you can see if you scroll all the way down, it says you can add additional customs, custom styles. And here again, you can add any additional CSS rules below. So I'm just going to go to our GitHub page and show you where you can find all of the information about what I did for the R Girls website. So we have to find the our girls theme .css. So this is what we're currently working on. And, and you can see here I've added in our Google fonts and I've made a lot of the changes. And after line 80, this is everything, all of the additional rules that I have. There's a lot of information here. I, I'm sure I don't even end up using half of the things here, but I'll go through just a couple of examples now. So the first one I'm going to take is this first section of code. So I'm gonna just copy this and I'll explain the code as we go. So this is saying H1, this stands for the number one header. So the biggest header size. And all I've done is I'm changing the color to the pink that we have used and I'm adjusting the font size. So now again, let's quickly knit this. And just like that, now we have our the font that we wanted is in pink. So again, this is the number one header. Now it's in pink and it's a little bit bigger. Okay, and how about for the buttons? I'm gonna scroll down, ignoring a lot of this code. And I did leave some comments here. Here on line 146, we can see it says change buttons on homepage. All I'm going to do again, I'm gonna copy this code and paste it here. Okay, so here we're changing the background color, the color, the border, and the border color. And I believe this is just the pink, but let's just take a quick look. Yep, so 195, 74, 121, it's the same as the pink. So again, let's save this and re-knit this file. Okay, so don't worry if you don't see our changes in our studio, let's open it up to a new window and double check. Cause yeah, so I got nervous the first time I saw that, but it does update on the actual website. 
And just like that, now we can see we have the pink and we have the hover color. Okay, so I know I kind of cheated just by copying and pasting, but just if you're interested, I will go through very briefly how I was able to figure out how to make these changes. So you can see this information, it says button outline dark. Okay, so if we go back to our website, if you go and put your um, cursor on one of the buttons and you right click, click inspect. So this is a way to inspect the actual HTML code. So this gets very technical, but I do just wanna give you a brief overview in case you're interested. So as soon as I did that, you can see this area of code is highlighted. And you can also see on the screen, it was highlighted on the actual button. So if you keep moving around, things will highlight different areas. But this is the area that we're interested in. And the important part here is to look at the class. And it says BTN for button and then button outline dark. So the class tells us how to, it's kind of like how do we refer to this specific area. So in our CSS, we can use this period and we put that button outline dark just as we saw it there. So now we can modify the information about the button like this. So this is all, again, this is all kind of like the CSS language. If it's new to you, it will take time to get used to, but with time, you will start to pick up and understand what, what's going on and little tricks to figure out how to really make small but really important changes to your website. Okay, so that was the button, and now this is the similar code, but it's for the, for the hovering color part of it, right? So, of course, we want when we hover over it, it will turn pink. So that's all that, that this code is saying. Okay, so I think at this point, let's just go ahead and build our website, just to double check everything. Okay, cool. So this is really pretty. It looks much nicer than before with all the default settings. The one thing I forgot, I think, to change in the last tutorial, I, I do want this to say home instead of being repetitive um, with what we have here. So let's go back to our studio and I believe back in our site, this title, I'm just going to change it to home and click save and we'll just do a quick rebuild. Okay, so now it says home and that looks a lot better. And so of course, the last thing that we wanna do once we're happy with our changes is push to GitHub. So as always, I'm going to go tools, shell, git add a, and commit. Again, we wanna make sure everything's checked there. And write create color theme. And finally push. All right, perfect. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I hope you had a lot of fun going through and picking out different fonts and different colors. And in the next few tutorials, we will go through uh, updating the navigation bar and adding in more tabs and more pages. So looking forward to seeing you there and thank you so much for watching.